Today we're talking about England. I don't really want to because they break my heart every four years. And I also don't think we're going to get past the quarterfinals. Welcome to On The Ball, the misery edition. They boast arguably the best league in world, world football, but still on the international stage, England seemed to fall short. Only one World Cup to show for it in 1966. That's what we're talking about today, and we'd love to hear your comments. This is the question, how will England fare in Russia? Send us your comments, and I'll try and read some of them throughout the show as we put Joe on the spot on On The Ball. But we've also got a special guest in studio. Uh, he's a well-known former international defender, and he also spent six years playing in Russia. He's probably got the best name to chant, though. Welcome, Matthew. Boo! <laughs> Cheers, thanks, Jules. Good to be here. Good to have you. So how do you think England are going to do in Russia? I think, well... I'll hand but it over to Joe. Don't ask him. <laughs> I, I already know how England are going to do in Russia. It's going to be the group stages. We'll do OK. We'll finish second. We'll go through. We'll play maybe Poland in the next round. And, um, yeah, we'll, we'll play quite well. Everyone will think, you know what, maybe maybe we've got a chance here. Then we play Germany in the quarterfinals and lose on penalties. It's done. It really is it's miserable today. There we go. There we go. <laughs> what do you think of the England team, though, Matthew? I think a uh, great young team. Um, third youngest, I think, at the World Cup. Um, you know, potential in the next four years. I would put money on them in Qatar, uh, without a doubt. Um, I think uh, England as a whole really haven't had a core of a team transition over eight years. And I think this team does have a potential to do that for the first time. So Matthew, how does this team then, uh, these young stars, compare to the team of 2006, where you look at them on paper, I think they would probably walk into any national team in the world at the time when you had the likes of Rooney, you had the Beckhams, your Joe Coles. I mean, we remember that goal he scored. I think uh, we agreed off air that Harry Kane is probably the only team in this particular squad who would be able to walk into... Yeah, uh, he's the only really world-class world player, I think, yeah. in, this, in this team. And, and that's not such a bad thing, um, because I think there's going to be less of the... There's going to be no clashing of egos. I think this is a young team that he can build with. Um, you know, he's had to do a lot of psychological work uh, building up to this, this World Cup. You know, he's got in, in uh, some of the Royal Marines uh, who have lost limbs um, in, in a couple of the wars. Uh, they've gone to see the, the Bobby Robson, who's, you know, your typical old school English yeah, manager yeah. Uh, film, you know, so he's been working in that in, in that regard. And here's the team up here. And uh, this was the class of 2006. I think myself, uh, I disagreed slightly. I thought the class of 1990 was slightly better than this one. But I, was, I, I wasn't, wasn't born. Oh, you were just born. <laughs> it was about three months probably. <laughs> Again, you know, this team had its uh, lacked in a certain regard. You know, Joe, Joe Cole played out on the left wing, not a typical left winger, uh, lacking perhaps a little bit of creativity um, behind Rooney. You know, I mean, uh, the back four though. Oh no, that was. That, that was I mean, at that point, that's probably the best back four in the world. Yeah, but you got two box-to-box -box players like Lampard and Gerrard. You know, yeah, playing they never behind worked. Rooney. I would, I would have preferred Joe Cole in behind a Rooney yeah. and then have a typical left footer out wide. Yeah, weirdly, if they played the formation they're playing now. Lampard and Gerrard could have worked better in that yep, formation yep. Than, than in the one they're using here. And likewise, I think Dyer and Henderson could, could do the job a if he does pivot, play 3-5-2. Yeah. Uh, three, five, three, five, mm. How does this midfield compare, though? Because when you're looking at that and we're talking about the standout players, I mean, the name like Beckham and like Lampard, Gerrard, I mean, the best players in the world at any time. Yeah, but that comes with its, with its issues. You know, I think the, the, the competition amongst the, the, the players that played in the EPL I think got too much for, for that particular definitely. squad. Definitely, definitely. There was um, too many big names at the same time, too many big egos, and it was a problem. Formed their cliques, you know, uh, exactly. during camp, and you, you want you want sort of some sort of symbiotic or kind of natural coming together when when it comes to your national team. You don't want to have cliques, you know, mm. and have what was reported at the time. Yeah. And I don't think Southgate's going to have the, the same problem mm. um, uh, with this particular squad. 
Just a reminder to send uh, your comments on Facebook. We are getting a general consensus show. People don't agree with you. They actually think England are going to get knocked out in the See, round they're, of 16. They're, 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 they're all gonna... being way too optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> they think knocked out in the round of 16. People are actually saying on Facebook, a lot of you, that they'll even struggle to get out of that Group G. Just Come on, don't are... give me this. <laughs> they are alongside Tunisia, Panama and Belgium. That's what people are saying. Right, so we've spoken about the fact that the squad are uh, a little bit inexperienced, younger. We're going to take a look at some of the howlers that the England goalkeepers have made in World Cups past. And they've been memorable for all the wrong reasons. He was sobbing after that, Joe. Were you too? Definitely a fluke. Definitely <laughs> fluke. He did not mean that. I refuse to admit that he meant it. Never, <laughs> never. Matthew? No, look, he's a... <laughs> Ronaldinho is a quality player, but from that distance to have meant it. The way he's shaped to take that ball, um, to, to hit that ball as well. It was a that, cross. That was a cross, yeah. <laughs> the other one, the 2010 one's a mistake. That's, there's no doubt about that. Shame he was crying. I still want to know, were you crying? Uh, yeah, I was at the waterfront. In, I was, no, sorry, that, that was 2002. I was, yes. in, I was in school assembly. We had on a big board, and that was the worst day of school in my life. Oh, shame, shame. <laughs> Poor Joe. Please send your uh, condolences and your hugs to Joe if you want to on Facebook. Don't forget to comment. Why don't we take a look at the keepers now that they're taking to this World Cup. It's interesting that they've had so many issues with keepers in the past. Um, and by, by issues, I mean big howlers and also that penalty record that they're choosing to take uh, keepers with so much inexperience. I mean, Nick Pope has no caps to his name. Yeah, I mean, the, the interesting thing with this, with this England team is very few of the players have got a lot of caps. I mean, Gary Cale I think is the guy with the most most caps, and he's not got that many. Um, but I mean, the thing I like about, especially Jordan Pickford, um, Pickford plays. Uh, we were talking to Matthew before, and, and it's the first time in my lifetime we've had a goalkeeper that wants to play. And, and you, usually we've had these typically typically English keepers that lump it out, let them let them go forward. Whereas Pickford is always looking to play out of the back. And I think it's one of the nice things about this England side is they do have a, um, a, an identity about them and a way of playing. And I think it's going to, going to suit having a keeper that's comfortable on the ball is going to suit that that formation if he does Definitely, play three at the yeah. back, you know, because it then allows Rose or or uh, Trippier to get forward, you know, Walker and uh, Kale will be able to drop in and they'll be able to play out from the back. Uh, for me, I've got to feel sorry for feel for for Hart. Um, I think for the qualifiers, you know, he was mm -hmm. there uh, for for most of the occasion. But I think Southgate has set a very good precedent in that he's picked on merit. You know, Hart hasn't, has, hasn't had the best seasons at, at West Ham, mostly due to the leaky defence, not from his own fault. Uh, but yeah, it's very unusual that you've got Heaton in the reserve list yeah. and mm. his compatriot and colleague at club level uh, in the squad, Pope. Yeah, mm. no, exactly, exactly. Uh, we're going to take a look at that penalty record that to? I spoke about a little <laughs> bit earlier. <laughs> Just having a hard time. I'll buy you a, a sweet after this. Thanks, okay. thanks. Uh, England have the joint worst record in penalty shootouts at the World Cup alongside Italy. North out of three. <sighs> I hate it. I hate it. The penalties are grim, though. The thing that annoys me about England is we always go out in weird ways. We never just get beaten. There's always something going on, penalties or a red card or a goal that went in that never got given and stuff like that. That's the problem. Why do you think it is so poor, Matthew? Well, like, isn't it? That's, that's, those are penalties, you know. Um, composure, uh, but the lady luck. I mean, my, my first memory of, of a World Cup was uh, uh, Chris Worrell striking his uh, penalty over the bar against West Germany. Ballooning it. You know, and, and I, I really felt for him, even at a, at a young age, you know, and uh, I think that's been England's... Um, downfall. Sort of downfall <laughs> for, for a number of years. Um, and yeah, just a bit of composure and, and basically not allowing themselves to get into that position in the mm -hmm. first place. You know? mm. Well, we'll see what England have to do at this uh, World Cup. You can catch them in action tonight, though. They play Costa Rica in their last World Cup warm-up before they head to Russia on the 12th. That'll be live on Supersport 3 at quarter to nine tonight. You can also go to supersport.com to check what other World Cup warm-ups we will be showing on your World of Champions. But for this episode of On The Ball, that's it. Matthew, thank you so much for joining us. It's been great hearing your opinions. Joe? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm quietly confident. I, not in terms of winning the World Cup, but I, I do think this is going to be a, an educational World Cup thing. I think Gareth Southgate's been, been very bold. So please keep, keep me in your prayers. If not England, just do it for me. That's all I want. <laughs> this has been On The Ball. Thank you very much.